Sure, we could wait until Spider-Man Far From Home is released to learn whether Mysterio is good or bad. You don't want any part of this. Or we can just look at the character's 55-year history in Marvel Comics and make the pretty obvious decision that this guy is up to no good. While the trailers and pre-release buzz for Far From Home have been billing Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio as an ally to the web-slinger, we here at Screen Rant will give you the proof you need to know that not only is Mysterio the film's big bad, but he's also likely lying about the multiverse as well. For those fans still willing to believe that Mysterio is a decent, fine, upstanding citizen based on what the Far From Home pre-release marketing blitz is telling them, look no further than the action figures coming to store shelves. The description on the back of the box goes so far as to say, Mysterio is a master of illusion and a sworn enemy of Spider-Man. So that answers that question. As certain fans were more willing than others to believe that Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio was fighting with the forces of good, others had their doubts. After all, the elementals may be wreaking havoc throughout Venice, but who's to say that these giant creatures of destruction are from another dimension? Perhaps they are simply illusions created by Mysterio in order to gain support, financially and otherwise, from world governments that think they need him. In the wake of Avengers Endgame, which featured the umpteenth time that cities were leveled to the ground in the MCU, we can only imagine the amount of debt and financial strain the governments of the world are facing. With Iron Man gone and Steve Rogers retired, resources have to be tight. Yeah, half the world's population has returned after a five-year absence, and apparently all of Peter Parker's high school class disappeared and reappeared with a snap by some odd coincidence. But it's worth noting that even with everyone who dusted away now restored back to life, it's probably still difficult for economies and job markets to adjust to the fluctuating population. Of course, Nick Fury and other leaders would jump at the offer of help from an apparently interdimensional being like Mysterio offering to help fight against destructive forces like the Elementals. The only thing is, if he's a villain, we have to agree that a brilliant plot by an unsavory master of illusion would be to convince the world of a new threat and then tell them you're the only man who can stop it. That is some wag the dog stuff, and hey, it's another brilliant plot for a big bad villain. Despite being praised in other areas, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has faced its fair share of criticism for its seemingly two-dimensional cardboard cutout villains. Yet after figuring out how to make engaging and relatable heroes, they've finally also figured out how to consistently present us with villains who have believable motives and take harsh but realistic actions to achieve their goals. They called me a madman. So let's all agree, or agree to disagree, that Mysterio is the main bad guy in Far From Home. This is a precedent that goes all the way back to the second Spider-Man solo comic, and Far From Home director John Watts has confirmed this. Watts told Screen Rant that he always took it right back to the source material and what made the character exciting initially. Therefore, let's look at his first appearance in the comics. While Mysterio isn't named in The Amazing Spider-Man No. 2, Peter Parker does do battle against the Vulture and later fights the Tinkerer. During Spider-Man's showdown with the Tinkerer, he fights off against the Tinkerer's associates, disguised as aliens. While Spider-Man is subdued in a Resisto glass case, the Tinkerer and the aliens escape. During Mysterio's official introduction in The Amazing Spider-Man No. 13, Mysterio appears to J. Jonah Jameson saying he's a good guy who will help the Daily Bugle chief bring Spider-Man to justice. Spider-Man ultimately outsmarts the Master of Illusion and embarrasses J. Jonah Jameson in the process. It's later revealed that Mysterio's alter ego, Quentin Beck, went through all the trouble to ally himself with Jameson and frame Spider-Man for crimes the wall crawler did not commit because he lost his job as a special effects artist thanks to Spider-Man. Plus, Peter Parker, the spectacular Spider-Man No. 51, reveals that Quentin Beck was one of the thieves disguised as aliens working with the Tinkerer. Their escape in The Amazing Spider-Man issue No. 2 inside a flying spaceship was just another ploy you'd expect to find from bad guys associated with Mysterio. Naturally, if Mysterio has been using special effects to convince witnesses that he's an otherworldly being since his first comic book appearance, and Spider-Man director John Watts has said these early appearances are his big inspiration for Mysterio, why shouldn't we assume that Mysterio Mysterio's multiverse storyline in the upcoming is fake. In the pre-release hype leading up to the film, John Watts has leaned heavily into all the new game-changing elements that Avengers Endgame offers to the overall MCU story. Watts is on the record as saying, Seeing all the crazy things that they did and all the questions that raises, we're definitely trying to answer one of the big ones. Alternate timelines. So many possibilities opened up at the end of Endgame, and Peter Parker is one of the few people on the ground dealing with them. 
So many crazy, world-shaping events have occurred around these gauntlet snaps, so it's entirely plausible for gateways to different universes to open up and branches from alternate timelines to intersect. Yet everything we know about Mysterio's comic book history seems to point toward a different outcome for the plot of Far From Home. Mysterio is a trickster through and through, and even his outfit hints at some kind of ulterior motive. Mysterio's costume plays a huge part of the theory that Mysterio himself is from our own dimension. According to Eric Carroll, a producer on Spider-Man Far From Home, there's a deep connection between the Master Illusionist and the Elementals he's purported to defend us from. Apparently, the Elementals are said to hail from the same universe that Mysterio hails from. Carol has described that the Mysterio fishbowl helmet will have a smoky, elemental quality to it. It's to be expected that the Marvel design team would want there to be visual similarities between Mysterio and the Elementals. Not only are they featured in the same film, but within the film, Mysterio says both he and the Elementals come from an alternate universe. We could use someone like you on my world. However, if Mysterio is in fact simply a huckster from our own dimension and the Elementals are just a special effect of his own creation, it makes sense for the Elementals to have a similar look to their creator. It's also been reported that Mysterio's costume has been inspired by the costumes of current and former Avengers. Eric Carroll has gone as far as to say that Mysterio's duds are deliberately similar to much of Vision's costume, Thor's red cape, Iron Man's breastplate, and some Doctor Strange influences for good measure. While art departments on franchise films tend to make connections between past and future designs, it's intended for Mysterio to have made his own costume with these heroes in mind. If Mysterio is fully aware of these figures from our own universe and was able to craft a super suit that matches their looks rather than heroes from his own universe, it's more probable that he doesn't come from another universe to begin with. And still, Peter can't help but be drawn to Mysterio, probably because he doesn't have many other people to look up to. His biggest role model, Tony Stark, just snapped himself to death. Without Iron Man and Uncle Ben, Peter is likely looking to fill that mentor void. According to Carol, Peter's not finding it in Nick Fury either. You sent Nick Fury to voicemail? I gotta go! While Fury was great in assembling the original Avengers team, his old-school way of getting the job done doesn't exactly sync up with Spider-Man. According to the producer, Peter's youthful, positive outlook and the ways of Fury, the agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., still operating with a 20th century mentality, find ways to butt heads. Filling that void, Quentin Beck becomes someone Spider-Man could trust. And turning that trust on its head and revealing that Beck was lying this whole time would be the kind of third act twist that would upend Spider-Man's outlook and catch the audience unawares. Speaking of third act twist, it's been all but confirmed that the Elementals get taken care of earlier in the film. Either that, or it's revealed that they've been controlled by Mysterio this whole time. During Screen Rant's visit to the Spider-Man Far From Home set, a scene was being shot featuring Peter and school friends being waylaid to the Tower of London. Snippets of dialogue from the footage were in reference to drones surrounding the outside of the tower. As Nick Fury is said to be using the drones as part of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s defenses, either someone has taken over those drones, or someone from inside is using the drones on their own. In the event of a national or international crisis, extra powers are often given to those who seem best able to take care of any threats. It seems like Mysterio would be the one to have control over the drones and any other resources S.H.I.E.L.D. could lend to his disposal, and it's incredibly likely that Quentin Beck would take the place of the Elementals as the movie's main antagonist. Still, it's likely the Marvel Cinematic Universe creative team has something else up their sleeves entirely. Spider-Man actor Tom Holland has said that the twist before the climax of the film was unnerving and that even director John Watts told Holland, people are gonna hate this scene. Holland went on to say, it sort of rips the rug from underneath your feet. We have to assume that this twist is in a similar vein to the one from Spider-Man Homecoming, in which it's revealed that Liz's dad is the Vulture. If this is in fact the twist that they're speaking of, then we have to assume that Mysterio's true identity is revealed at this time. But we have to assume that Watts and Holland know their fanbase enough and know that we've been discussing the true motives of Mysterio during the whole build-up to the film. With this in mind, what if an entirely new villain appears as the main antagonist, forcing Spider-Man and Mysterio to face off against an even bigger threat than the tricks of the Master of Illusions? It's been rumored that the Chameleon is due for an appearance in the forthcoming Spider-Man film. Since the beginning of the Spider-Man comics, Dmitry Smerdyakov, aka the Chameleon, has proven to be a tough villain for Spider-Man to outsmart. Plus, it's been reported that actor Numan Akar is playing a character named Dmitry. John Watts even went as far as to refuse to directly shoot down rumors that Akar was playing the Master of Disguise himself. So, which twist would be bigger? The fact that Mysterio is likely from our own dimension and an arch-nemesis to boot? or the likelihood that an even more mysterious villain will make an appearance. Regardless, we expect to see the chameleon in this film, as it makes sense for the film to feature two characters who rely on trickery and deception to outwit our hero. If Mysterio ends up being the main villain of Spider-Man Far From Home like we expect him to be, it makes sense for him to have lied, cheated, and stolen his way into Spider-Man and S.H.I.E.L.D.'s good graces, only to betray them all later.
So do you think Mysterio has some good in him? Do you believe he's telling the truth about the multiverse, or do you think he's hiding something up his fishbowl? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the latest scoops and theories about your favorite film and TV franchises, only on your friendly neighborhood screen right. See you later.